This video is brought to you by Too Long. That's the official TLDR newspaper we've made and which is available to order right now. Today, the far right wins the Dutch election. A Russian actress is killed in a Ukrainian airstrike and UK Chancellor Jeremy Hunt cuts UK taxes. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday the 23rd of November 2023. Yesterday, voters in the Netherlands went to the polls for a general election without outgoing longtime Prime Minister Mark Rutte on the ballot. So let's take a look at the results. Surging into first place is the right-wing Populist Party for Freedom, or PVV, led by Gert Wilders, a long-time player in Dutch politics known for his anti-Islam and anti-immigration views. His party ended up on 37 seats, up from the 17 they won at the last election in 2021. His manifesto called for banning mosques and the Koran, as well as holding a referendum on leaving the EU, aka Nexit. In second place, with 25 seats, is the new centre-left Green Labour Alliance, which campaigned primarily on the issue of climate change, housing affordability and minority rights. This was led by Franz Timmermans, former foreign minister and the European Commissioner's ex-climate chief, known for his work on the European Green Deal. Close behind them, with 24 seats, 10 seats lower than in 2021, is the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy, or VVD, which is the party formerly led by Mark Rutte, which, until this year, had won every election in the country since 2010. Rutte was succeeded as party leader this year by his justice minister, Dilan Yeshigo Zigerius, who led the VVD into this election, hoping to become the country's first female prime minister. In fourth place, with 20 seats, is New Social Contract, a brand new party led by popular former Christian Democrat politician Peter Omzigt, who came to prominence in part for his role in exposing the childcare benefit scandal which brought down Mark Rutte's previous government in 2021. Omzigt campaigned on transparency, government reform and democratic overhaul, but also favours limiting immigration. There were then 11 other parties who finished with less than 10 seats. Despite a strong first place finish, Wilders will face a significant challenge in actually forming a new government, mainly because his PVV party has long been very contentious. And ahead of the election, the other major parties had expressed their reluctance to be ruled out entering government with him. But having come first by a significant margin, it's hard to see how a coalition could form without the PVV. And as Wilders himself said, his party has become too big to ignore. He's also signalled that he's willing to compromise on some of his policies in order to form a working coalition. Perhaps the most plausible outcome is a right-wing coalition led by the PVV, including the VVD and New Social Contract, which together would have 81 seats, five more than the 76 required for a majority in the 150-seat lower chamber. But as usual in Dutch politics, government formation will be a long process. For more on the results and the prospect of a Wilders-led government, we have a full video coming out on Friday on the TLDR EU channel. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Moving to Russia now, where an actress has been killed by a Ukrainian airstrike in the middle of a performance to Russian troops. Polina Menshik was giving a show to the troops in a dance hall in the village of Kumachove, which is near the front line in Donetsk, to celebrate a Russian military holiday. During the performance, the dance hall, which is capable of seating around 150 people, a video showing the moment the strike hit was uploaded to social media. Menshik is seen singing and playing the guitar before an explosion is heard and the lights in the hall go out. Ukraine claimed that as part of this strike, around 20 Russian soldiers were killed. For their part, Russian authorities have not commented on this claim. Ms Menshik was taken to hospital where she died of her injuries. Pro-war Russian bloggers have used the incident to criticise the organisation of the show, saying that a concentration of dozens of soldiers in one place made it an obvious target for Ukraine. In response to this incident, Portal, a theatre studio in St. Petersburg who's associated with Miss Menshik, said that they would dedicate a performance of a play that she'd directed to her memory. 
Moving to the UK now, where Chancellor Jeremy Hunt gave his autumn statement. In this, Hunt took the opportunity to cut taxes and provide some respite to those in the UK still struggling with the cost of living crisis. As part of this, Hunt said that the main 12% rate of employee national insurance contributions will be reduced down to 10%, starting on the 6th of January 2024. In total, this means that around 28 million people will save, on average, around £450 per year. In addition to this, Hunt also promised to increase the national minimum wage to £11.44 an hour. For the first time, this will also be extended to 21-year-olds. Hunt also promised to maintain the triple lock on pensions, which guarantee that pensions should rise each year in line with earnings, prices or by 2.5%, whichever's higher. He confirmed that pensions would rise this year by 8.5%. Noticeably, the Chancellor didn't scrap or even reduce inheritance tax, something he was under pressure to do both by the right-wing press and by some of his right-wing colleagues in the Conservative Party. Moving to space now, where new research released on Wednesday this week has found that galactic cosmic rays, and to a lesser extent microgravity, can impair the functions of erectile tissues in male astronauts. Moreover, the effect from this can last, potentially, for decades. This is an area that has so far been lacking research. US researchers who were part of the study said that they discovered a new health risk to consider with deep space exploration. The good news, though, is that certain antioxidants may actually help to counteract these harms. About this, Dr. Justin LaFavor from Florida State University said that functional improvements induced by acutely targeting the redox and nitric oxide pathways in the tissues suggest that the erectile dysfunction may be treatable. Considering that space agencies such as NASA are currently preparing for a manned trip to the Moon and then Mars in the near future, it's also important that the effect of space travel on humans is as fully understood as possible. Generally, astronauts are given protection from the cosmic radiation from space. However, they still experience in one week about as much radiation as a person on the ground would experience in a year. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss an offshore wind turbine installation in the state of New York. This is the first wind turbine installation in the state and is expected to have an output of around 130 megawatts. In total, this facility will generate enough electricity to power 70,000 homes in New York. The energy produced will get to East Hampton via a transmission line that was installed in March. It's expected to eliminate around 6 million tonnes of carbon emissions, which is roughly the equivalent of taking 60,000 cars off the road over a 25-year period. If you want more from TLDR and want to support our journalism, consider picking up a copy of our newspaper, Too Long. This is a one-off physical newspaper we've been working on over the last few months, which includes 32 pages of analysis and explainers from the TLDR team on everything from Ukraine and Gaza to the state of the French and German governments or the upcoming elections in the UK, US and around the world. It's not just us either. We have a full interview with creator and journalist Johnny Harris that people who buy the newspaper can also watch via a special QR code. Plus, there's articles from a ton of other creators, including JJ McCullough, Search Party, Sophia Smith Gaylor, and many more. This really has been a very exciting project for us to work on, and hopefully you can already see all the work we've put into it, even the TLDR-themed crossword. So if you want to pick up a copy and help fund our journalism on YouTube as we head into 2024, then the link to the store is in the description. Plus, you can get 20% off your purchase this week only by using code TLDRDAILY at checkout. And with a limited quantity available, if you do want one, I'd order soon, especially if you want it before Christmas. As always, thanks so much for your support, and I hope you like this silly but genuinely very good project as much as we do. Thank you.